Hello everybody, I'm Nick and welcome to the 2024 version of my .NET developer roadmap, mainly focusing on backend .NET developers. I do one of these every year because many of you ask me, hey Nick, how can I learn how to be a .NET developer? So in this video, I'm going to go through the entire roadmap and trust me, it is very, very, very big, but I don't want you to be scared because this is big for a reason. It is both for juniors, mid, seniors and leads. And depending on your position, you should learn more of this roadmap. As a junior, you shouldn't know all of this. As a mid, you shouldn't know all of this. Maybe half. As a senior, maybe a bit more. And as a lead, maybe everything. Now, some feedback from the previous roadmap versions was that there was no way to link to training resources on how to learn any aspect of this roadmap. So in this roadmap, whenever you see an asterisk here, you'll be able to click on it and you'll see how you can learn more of that thing. I will go through every single one of them in this video and I might skip some sections because they might not be relevant to everyone. But if you want to get a copy of this roadmap, use the link in the description and you'll be able to get it for free. If you like our content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out our courses on DomeTrain.com. Speaking of DomeTrain, just let's get this out of the way. I am running a platform that has online courses by professionals, Microsoft employees, Amazon employees, people who have been doing development for a very long time in professional companies, including courses of myself. Now, every year when I launch this roadmap, I do offer a discount on our courses and many of the resources in this roadmap are from Dome Train. So until the 31st of March, you can use the code that you'll be able to get if you get the roadmap in the description down below, and that will give you 20% off any course. Now, once you get the roadmap, you'll be able to actually learn. And every time you learn something, you'll be able to say, oh, I'll learn this one and that will give you a percentage on your progress. So as you go along, you'll be able to track how much you've learned. So a bit of a legend, some things are marked as must knows, good to knows alternatives and I would not recommend. In previous versions, I did not have that I would not recommend, but many of you asked me, why is this missing? Why is this missing? And the assumption was, well, I don't recommend it, but in this version, I actually added it because I want to talk about it a bit. So first things first, general development, you must know how to do version control with Git is a must. I think it is a must to use GitHub and GitLab is an excellent alternative. Then learning how to search Google Stack Overflow and ChatGPT, I think is a must as well as in ID AI systems like GitHub Copilot or JetBrains AI Assistant. Those are becoming more and more prevalent and you're going to see way, way more of them. And of course, .NET 8, .NET CLI. And now I would recommend you get started with .NET Aspire because it is not going anywhere. It has big Microsoft investment behind it and people like David Fowler literally pushing it everywhere. So get ready for Aspire to get bigger and bigger. Then Solid, Dry, Yagni and Kiss. I do think you should know what they are and how they work. We do again have a Dome Train course on that. And then ASP.NET Core Basics, Web API, Minimal API, Routing, Middleware, Filters, Configuration, Authentication, Authorization and Dependency Injection. We're going to have more on DI later, but then on Authentication, you must know Jot, you must know Basic, you must know Token, OAuth, Cookies, and then it is really good to know OpenID and Sample. I actually want to start producing more content on Off because it is one of those things that people just don't want to touch. So it's underrepresented in the tutorial aspect. Then RDBMS databases, learn the fundamentals, learn SQL syntax. I do not recommend you learn store procedures and I do not recommend you learn triggers, they're sort of obsolete and they are considered anti-patterns. I know many people disagree with that idea, but the more you go into bigger, well-organized companies, the more you see that these two things are just not touched at all. And then engines, I would recommend Postgres, SQL Server, and Marie and MySQL to be good to know, but Postgres is kind of king when it comes to database engines. And then APIs, REST in both minimal and web API. And I would also recommend you take a look at fast endpoints as an alternative, then GraphQL, Good to know, in my opinion, both that and gRPC. So if you have these service to service communications within your company, gRPC is an excellent candidate for that. And I do actually want to produce more content in GraphQL because it's such an amazing piece of technology that solves many of the problems that REST has. Of course, it introduces other complexities, but I think we're going to talk about that on a dedicated video that's coming soon. So subscribe so you don't miss that. Then ORMs, Dapper is still my favorite personal ORM, but NT Framework Core, in my opinion, has matched it. So I think you should know both of them. And on top of everything we had last year, now we also have Interceptor in CDF Core. So you should, in my opinion, 
learn that. Then RepoDB is a nice alternative and I actually want to produce some content on that as well because it's been going for a while now and many people use this. So RepoDB is an excellent alternative, but I would not recommend and hibernate. And hibernate is, in my opinion, quite not dead, it's still around, but I'd rather you used EF or Dapper or RepoDB. It's very much considered legacy. The dependency injection must know, again, we have a course, and Scrooter, still good to know, adds nice functionality on top of it. No SQL databases, I think you must know Redis, it's just everywhere. Elasticsearch is between a must know and good to know depending on your system and what you're building. So you can take that either as a good to know or as a must know. And then it's good if you know at least one cloud proprietary NoSQL database like AWS DynamoDB or Azure Cosmos DB. Then messaging, we have Azure Service Bus or AWS SQS. Both of them are must know, but of course, depending on which platform you are using, if you're Azure, Azure Service Bus, if you're AWS, SQS and SNS, then RapidMQ is an excellent alternative and good to know. I do believe that Mass Transit is the best messaging abstraction out there right now. Wolverine is a nice up and coming alternative. And I'm a bit on the fence with N Service Bus. I actually talked about this recently that I was about to make a video on it, but it just felt a bit like legacy, like old .NET or old C Sharp. So I'm not a fan. I can't see a situation where I would use and service bus over mass transit. However, I do know that the devs of and service bus are listening on how to improve this. So maybe this will get better in the next few months or years. I guess we're gonna see next year. Then unit testing, massive thing. We have frameworks. I believe XUnit is the best and the one you should be using. Then you have and substitute, mock and fake it easy. All of them are fine, but my personal opinion is that and substitute is the best. Mock is a good alternative. Fake it easy is another good alternative, but N substitute is my personal favorite and the one I use. Then accessions, again, fluent accessions, my favorite, and then test data, bogus, and auto fixture, you should know. And of course, we have a course that goes through all that. And we also have an integration course that teaches you how to use the replication factory, test containers, and respond using Docker in conjunction with your integration testing and running your application in memory through the WAF that allows you to have extremely fast integration tests and add tons of value very quickly to your system. In API documentation, Open API is something you basically must know. And if you're more on the asynchronous aspect as well, asynchronous messaging, then async API is good to know as well. Then in monitoring, you must know OpenTelemetry, Prometheus and Grafana and the ELK stack in general. I know Grafana is part of that stack but I want to separate it as well because I want to focus a bit on Grafana. Grafana is used a lot, so I want to have it separate. Then we have containers. So Docker, you must know. I don't think there should be a developer nowadays who doesn't know how to use Docker um, and then Podman as an alternative. And then in orchestration, you have Kubernetes. Must know Kubernetes. We actually just launched a massive course on Kubernetes and we do have a course on Docker as well. And then tooling, uh, K9 and Lens, I do believe you should know both of them. K9 is the one I prefer, but Lens is more pleasing visually. So that's why I use it for videos. Then cloud in general, be familiar with Azure or AWS. That's of course heavily dependent on the company you're going to work for. So I won't tell you one is better than the other because we don't actually choose a cloud provider based on which one is best. We choose it based on which one the company we work for can get the best deal on. So whichever one you learn heavily depends on where you work. I do want to say, however, that we do have a free course on how to get started with AWS services as a C-Sharp developer. So you can click on that and enroll for free. And then coming to a close slowly, I do believe that even as a developer, you should be familiar with CI and CD technologies. So GitHub Actions must know. Team City and Octopus deploy both good to know and alternatives for C-Sharp developers specifically. We see those technologies a lot in the .NET ecosystem. Then Azure Pipelines, good to know. GitLab CI, good alternative. And then Build Automation, my favorite is by far Nuke. Cake is a good alternative, but Nuke is just, in my opinion, so much better. Then .NET libraries, all of them are must knows. Poly, which is now sort of integrated into everything. Microsoft, Affluent Validation, Humanizer, Benchmark.net, Mediator, and also Units.net. And to wrap it all up, I do think on the DevOps side of things, you should have exposure to infrastructure as code. So I think Terraform is a must know and Pulumi is a good alternative. That of course depends on the company you work for. So whichever one you choose, it doesn't matter that much, at least 
choose something and that is it i know it is a lot but you can start working your way through that and you will learn basically everything you need to be all the way from junior to a lead again until the 31st of march 20 percent off any dom train course with code that you will find in the description down below when you get the roadmap or click that button it automatically applies it and we very recently launched dom train pro which gives you access to all of our courses and we have 10 more actually coming in the next few months so if you subscribe to that you will get instant access to our entire course catalog yes i know it sounds very much sales pitchy but trust me if you do this and you truly invest in your future you'll be able to find a job that pays way way more than whatever you invest in your learning and not only that but if you already have a job you'll be able to better yourself and work onto a promotion so again get this roadmap from the description down below and please let me know did i miss something and do you want me to add something for example i didn't include mappers in this roadmap and that's intentional i don't think you should be using but what else am i missing leave a comment down below and let me know well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching and as always keep coding